Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a lamp that charges your phone. For a while now, I've been wanting to make a new lamp to go on my bedside table where there's a whole bunch of different stuff that I think could be consolidated down. I've got chargers for my watch and for my phone, and so I think I want to put at least one of those in the base of the lamp. Now, the last couple days, I've actually been spending time in Fusion trying to mock this thing up. I have tons of pieces of paper trying to sketch out ideas. I'm just not getting anywhere, so I think instead, we're just gonna start making it. Generally, I think what I'm gonna do here is mount this charger inside this piece of wood and cover it with a piece of leather. I did test that, and it will still charge through the leather, so that's pretty cool. Then, on the back side of this bottom piece, I wanna have an upright that'll come up maybe straight, maybe at an angle, I'm not really sure, and then at the top, it will fold over. Now on the top of that piece will be the actual lamp, but on the underside, I think I'm gonna mount this LED matrix. Now the idea here is that I can make a low light reading light facing down on the bottom side of this, and this is an RGB panel, so I can change the color if I ever decide I want to. That's generally the idea, but I don't really have a specific plan, so we're just gonna give it a shot. To figure out the angle that I want to put this at, I'm actually just kind of doing it by eye and then using this digital protractor to record the angle. And once I know the angle here, I can go to the miter saw and set it to match. All right, so here's the plan as of right now. This is gonna go right here and connect probably through some dowels so it's nice and strong. And then we'll use dowels at the bottom to hold that as well. But after I got putting this together, I realized that I really like this slight angle, and I may want to mirror that angle on the bottom edges of this piece and on the front edge of this. So I think I'm going to set the table saw to the same seven degree cut and take all of these pieces and kind of add a chamfer to the edges using the table saw. Now, unfortunately, if I don't like that, then I've already cut off a lot of material, so we're just going to kind of see how it turns out. I've got the pieces cut down to where I think I want them to be and I figured out the placement. I was thinking about the dowels and unfortunately it's gonna be really difficult to drill a hole, put in the dowel center and then transfer that hole, drill a new hole at the same angle since these pieces are not gonna actually be perpendicular to each other. So I think instead, we're gonna temporarily glue these pieces together and then go back and drill the hole through both pieces and reinforce it with the dowel after the fact. Luckily we can hide that on the back side, not a big deal, but before, we actually glue any of these pieces together. We have a whole bunch of holes we have to cut for the charger, for the LEDs, and some other stuff. I've got a circle drawn out here where this needs to be recessed in. Now there's a few different ways you could do this. What I'm gonna try to do is drill out a big section with a Forstner bit and then come back in with a jigsaw and cut out a close approximation of the circle. Luckily, it doesn't really have to be exact because this whole section is gonna get covered up with leather. Now that means I'm also gonna have to make a little inset here, the thickness of the leather, and the leather I'm gonna use is very, very thin. So I think after I get this drilled out, I'll go back and draw in the perimeter of the leather and use a router to kind of cut that down in then we're gonna cut out the leather on the laser. I was about to cut this out and I realized that it would probably make more sense to cut it out with the router instead of a Forstner bit so that I don't have to go all the way through and I can easily clean up the bottom surface. And that's because the wood is a lot thicker than this and I don't have to backfill underneath this piece to keep it in place. So I'm gonna set the depth of the router bit in two passes to get to the thickness of this so I can drop it right in. But before I even do that, I also wanna find the center of my circle and then from that point, redraw the circle that I've got and a larger circle of a specific diameter so that I can use that same specific diameter to cut out a piece of leather on the laser.
This turned out pretty well. Now, obviously, we still have to dye the leather and add some wax to it, and then we'll glue it down. But before we do that, we have a lot of other stuff we have to do. I've traced out the area where the LED panel is going to go. It's going to sit right about there. And effectively, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the charger. I'm going to route out the section for this to lay down in, and then a little rim around the outside for a piece of acrylic to sit on top of it. That's going to act as a diffuser. So really, I'm just going to measure this out, use the router just like I did before. I went ahead and routed out this area just like I did on the bottom section and this is for the LED matrix to sit in. Now I also made a deeper part. I'm going to drill in through the back to make a through hole and then these wires can feed through that hole. Now we need to frost this to make sure that it's more of a diffused light. So I'm going to take this to the sander and actually sand both sides of it and that'll help kind of break down the light and make it a little bit softer. Now the other thing to think about is that this matrix needs something to control it, an Arduino or something like that. I've got a little ESP module which will work fine for that. It's also got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on it. It so I can actually change something about the light remotely, but I need a place to actually put this. And instead of mounting it up here on top of it to where it's kind of ugly, I think I'm gonna hide it down in the bottom. So I'm gonna run the wires from the lights all the way down, and then on the underside of this bottom section, I'm gonna route out an area that I can embed this controller in and still get access to it from underneath in case I need to reprogram it. I got that section routed out and it actually connected to the hole that I made for the cables to come through and I'll probably have to make that bigger as more cables are going to have to run through that same space. But next up, I'm going to have to route another channel on the back side of this so we can run some wires from the bottom to the top to connect all those components. Now the next thing and last thing before I start putting all this together is to add a small curve. This is all very angular, very straight line, and I think it might be kind of cool to put a really shallow curve on each side of this upright piece. To do that, I'm gonna use a flexible ruler. So I'm gonna put in a couple of nails here on the corner and then bend this ruler to the radius I want and then trace that line. I've got one more little thing I want to do here before I start gluing all this together. I've marked out an area right here on this back upright piece, and that's going to house this little switch. This will get hooked up to the ESP module so I can control the lights through the code. I've been working on some code for this thing, and I think I've got it pretty much there. There's still a few things I could tweak, but I wanted to run through it really simply. Now this little microcontroller that I'm using is an ESP board, and it's got Wi-Fi built on. Just like the Alexa Finger that I made a long time ago, this thing can act as an internet-controlled device. But instead of a Belkin Wemo device, now it emulates a Philips Hue bulb. That's really handy because we're actually making a light. So we've got the switch that works to turn the whole thing on and off. And then on the app, for the Alexa app, you can actually change the brightness of it and it will fade that brightness down as well as turn the light on and off. But these are RGB LEDs, which means you could do all sorts of color stuff if you ever want to spend the time programming. Now I've got this prototyped. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the wiring and get it installed. 
This thing's just about ready to put together, but we finally have to put the lamp on this lamp. I'm gonna use a small lamp kit. These are really inexpensive and really easy to put together. You just wire up the wires to the terminals and then you stick it onto the lamp that you wanna make. Now in this case, we're gonna be putting on another piece of walnut and that will get stuck right here on the top. That'll allow the wires to drop down into the channel on the backside. And then this piece will hold the shade. And at that point, it will actually look like a lamp. So we've got a few other things we've got to do. We need to dye the leather, we need to frost the acrylic, and put some finish on, and this thing will be done. I mentioned earlier I was gonna sand this, and I still might, but I remember that I had this vellum-like material. It's a really thin, kind of flexible, but frosted paper. And so I went ahead and cut out a matching piece I'm gonna put behind this, and that will give me a glossy surface on the front. If that's not enough diffusion, I can actually go back and sand both sides of this, and it'll just add to it. Here it is, the finished lamp. I had a vague idea what this was gonna look like when I got started, but I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I love that there's a built-in charger because I have one less thing on this little table now. I also think there's a whole lot of room and a lot of experimentation you could do with the code and the LEDs. I think in the future I can have it do lots of different things and you've got a lot of room here to add more controls if you need them. If this thing gave you some ideas for a project that you could make for your house, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out and if you're not subscribed, do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. The piece of leather, then I can drop my don't, my don't. A flexible marker, marker, really? Yeah. For the cables to come through, and I end up may, end up may, and then that'll give us. Uh, uh, yeah, let me just start over. Beef smoothies. Mmm. Even. Um, <laughs>